Hey there Dev Squad, Virtus here and welcome back to my Unreal Engine 4 Mech Combat tutorial series. Within today's video we're going to be taking a look at how we can set up our helicopter special attack within our Mech Combat game. So this special attack as you can see on the screen is going to be one where the player is going to be able to move forwards, backwards, left and right but at the same time they are going to be spinning their wrist flying their hammer all around and hitting any enemies that go in front of them. Now, unlike the whirlwind ability, this ability is just going to damage players to the front and as such is going to cost less energy. And as such, we need to accommodate that as part of our code. So by the end of this video, you are going to be able to move around and use this attack at the same time. And you're also going to have an input to set it off as well. And once again, in this video, we're not going to be covering how to damage the AI using this ability as that's something that we're going to be covering once we've included all of our special attacks and got them set up. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive straight into it. So the first thing that I'm going to do is go into my animation blueprint for my mech. So open up mech underscore anmbp. Once we've got this open, what we're going to be doing is going back to our state machine and we're going to be creating a state for this attack. Drag out from idle all the way down to below whirlwind and add a state. We're going to give this the name helicopter attack. And then with this, we're also going to drag from helicopter attack to idle and then also to walk, run and back to normal. So what you should have right now is something that looks exactly like mine. So you should have your helicopter and then transitional rules going from idle to and from and also walk run to and from as well. Within this helicopter attack, we need to do more than just plug in the animation. And the reason for that is because we need to blend the blend space for walking and running for the bottom half of the character and then the animation for this attack for the top half of the character. So we've got to do a little bit of blending. So let me show you exactly how we're going to do all of this. Now we can easily do this using the layered blend per bone node. What this is going to allow me to do, like I said, is blend the two animations or whatever it is that you're trying to, uh, you know, the two poses that you're trying to blend. In this case, what I'm going to be blending is first of all, in the bottom right in the asset browser, I'm going to be taking the run walk and putting this into the base pose. And then for blend pose zero, I'm going to get my wrist twist animation. For our direction and speed, put this in here. So get a reference to direction, get a reference to speed and hook it up just like that. Now within our layered blend per bone node, what we need to do within the details under layered setup, zero and branch filters, add an element. And at this element, we're going to give this bone the name torso. So this is essentially our way of determining or defining at which point we need to blend these poses. So for us, that is going to be torso and the blend depth is going to be free. So I am all happy with this. So what we can now do is go back to our state machine. What we need to set up is our transitional rules, but at the moment we don't have any code that we can tie to this. So having said that, we're going to compile this and go back to our third person BP character. So open up third person character under third person BP. And then within here, what we're going to be doing is second, setting up another input. The input for this is going to be the keyboard event for two. If you want to find it, right click, find your inputs wherever it is. So go down to inputs and then go to keyboard events and then just look for two and you'll be able to find it. Or if you just press two on the keyboard, you can find it under keyboard events. So we're pretty much going to be setting up our code in the same way as we did for our whirlwind attack. So when they press it, we are going to run a branch check. And that check is just to see whether or not they've got enough energy. So we are going to do float greater than or equal to, and then we are going to get our attack energy. Now this attack isn't going to be as powerful as the whirlwind ability. As such, it's only going to require two energy. So instead of three being the required amount, we are going to set this to two. 
once we've done this, we are then going to run another check, and this check is just to see whether or not they are already attacking. So hook this up into your condition. Once you've done this, if they are already attacking, do nothing. If they aren't, then what you want to do is set your attack energy to float. So float minus float, and then all we're doing is just minusing two from the existing value that we've got here. So it should look like this. So we're doing attack energy minus two. Once you've done this, what we're going to be doing is creating a variable and we're going to give this the name helicopter active. And this is the variable we'll be using within our animation blueprint to tell the engine whether or not it should be playing the animation for the helicopter attack. So drag this in and use set. So from attack energy minus the value, we're going to be setting the helicopter active to true. And at the same time, so the engine also knows we are already attacking, we're going to drag out from already attacking, set the variable for that, and we are going to set this to true. And that's all good. So now all we need to do is when they release two on their keyboard, we are then going to set helicopter active to untrue and then also set already attacking to untrue so the engine knows once they release that key stop attacking hit compile and you should have no problems there now what i am going to do for the sake of convenience to make working with our code a little bit easier is i'm going to select all of my code for my helicopter special attack that i've just created and then I am going to press C to comment on this and I'm going to give this the name helicopter attack and then I'm going to do the same thing for my whirlwind attack. So select everything, press C and we're going to give this the name whirlwind attack. And also for the sake of convenience, instead of using the right mouse button, I am going to use one on the keyboard the keyboard number one for this, for the whirlwind instead. So if we go ahead and hit compile, we should have no issues. So now, if we go into our game and press play, if we press one on our keyboard, it should fire off the whirlwind, but two, doing that, it's gonna take away the energy, but it's not going to play the animation. And the reason why it's not playing our animation is because we haven't set up the transitional rules. So now we've got the variable and the code in place, Let's go back into our animation blueprint. If you want to find it, go to mech combat, meshes, main character, and then mech underscore animbp. And essentially, all we're doing is copying the code that we used for the whirlwind transitional rules. So going from idle to helicopter attack, you want to open this up. And all we need to do is feed in the helicopter attack variable. But at the moment we don't have access to that. So go to your event graph. As third person character, you want to get helicopter active and then just promote this to a variable. And just give it the name helicopter active as I have done there. So now we can use it. So going back into that transitional rule, helicopter active, get a reference to it and hook it up to idle to helicopter active. Now, if we go back to our state machine, you want to do the same thing going from walk run to helicopter attack. So open that up, helicopter active, and just hook that up straight in there. So moving on from there, this is where we now need to go back. So what I'm going to do is copy the code for my whirlwind attack. So going back, if we open this up, you can see what I've done here is if the speed is less than 10 and the whirlwind active is not true, then it's going to do it. So I'm going to copy all of this code and I'm going to open up helicopter attack to idle. And all I'm going to do is just paste this in and hook it up just like that. We're going to get rid of our whirlwind active and just simply replace it with helicopter active instead. And as you can see here, I'm just reusing some of my code and it's going to save us a lot of time. Going back from Whirlwind to Walk and Run, 
I'm going to get the transitional rule for that. And then I'm just going to copy this code again. So open that up. And then going back from helicopter attack to walk and run. If we open up that transitional rule, once again, all we're doing is pasting our code in and just changing the reference from whirlwind attack to helicopter active. For those of you that want to take a look and go through this code again, once again, all we're doing is just checking to make sure that the speed is greater than 10, because if it is greater than 10, then you want to be going to your walk and run state instead of idle. And if at the same time helicopter is not active, then go into that state. So if we go ahead and hit compile and play within our level that we've created, making sure you save everything that you've got, we should see that both of our abilities should now work, both the helicopter attack and also our whirlwind attack as well. And we're going to be able to find this out in just a second once it's loaded. Press play, and if we press 1 on the keyboard, that's going to do our whirlwind, and 2 is going to do our helicopter attack, and that is all working. So hopefully you guys are starting to see that our abilities are coming to life. Once again guys, thanks for watching, stay awesome, keep creating, your boy Virtus, signing out. This video was made possible by my supporters on Patreon. If you want more videos like this, check out my Patreon page using the link in the description. To stay up to date on new releases, make sure you follow us on social media.